All right, Lucy and I are out here to review this bad boy. We're gonna look not only at the Jackery Explorer 1500 power station, but actually the complete Jackery 1500 solar generator. In full disclosure, Jackery did provide the 1500 and the solar panels to me to review, and Jackery is also a sponsor of the channel. That said, all of my reviews are my own words, my own thoughts. Jackery does not tell me what to say in these videos. Uh, it's up to me to look at this and tell you what I think of it. For my own uses, I'm less inclined to use solar because I tend to do more sort of overland style travel. Uh, I'm usually driving each day. It gives my Jackery unit an opportunity to recharge. But today we are gonna look at the solar generator with the solar panels and see how that works. Without question, this is not a budget setup. But if you are on YouTube today looking for information about the Jackery 1500 solar generator, then this video may be of interest to you. And if, like me, you generally run on a tighter budget, you can stay tuned. At the end of this video, I will tell you about a sort of giveaway game that Jackery uh, will be doing in conjunction with their Explorer Week coming up. Now let's take a look at the features of the Explorer 1500. With a capacity of nearly 1500 watt hours and the ability to run at 1800 watts, there's really an astonishing amount of power in this box. There's not much it won't run. It has three built-in AC outlets with pure sine wave output, a 60 watt USB-C output, a quick charge USB-3 output, a USB-A output, and a cigarette lighter style 12 volt output. The dual inputs offer the ability to use two different sources at once and greatly reduce how long it takes to recharge the unit and the charging speed has been significantly increased over my 500. Just with a single AC input, I got this from 22% to 94% in 4 hours, whereas it takes my Explorer 500 a full 8 hours to recharge its 500 watt capacity. I'm not going to dive into the nitty gritty of the technical specs of this. There are a lot of videos out there already that really get into wattages and amperages and times and stuff like that. I, the, really what I'm concerned about with any unit like this is how is it going to actually work for me out on the trail. The Explorer 500 that I've been using for the past year and a half has worked out great for running my fridge and keeping my devices recharged. I'm excited to incorporate the 1500 though in my new camping build. It opens up a lot of possibilities, a lot of things that I would not have been able to run with the 500. The possibility of being able to carry and operate some real power tools on the trail is intriguing. Would I ever truly have a need to grind metal out on the trail? I don't know. It's possible. I've certainly seen those off-roaders in Australia use grinders and other power tools. Now it turns out that my grinder actually looks like my 500 may have run it. I suspect with any amount of use, I would chew through the battery of the 500 pretty quickly. Having the larger capacity gives you obviously a lot more buffer for if you do end up with unexpected high power needs. The complete Solar Generator 1500 package includes four of Jackery's Solar Saga 100 panels and ships with two of these adapters so you can plug all four into the Explorer 1500's two inputs. The panels fold down to form their own little carry case, and the charging cable, housed in a zippered pouch, is permanently attached so you can't lose it. Each panel has its own USB outputs as well and can be used as a standalone charger for USB devices. Now I'm sure you can find another video about the 1500 solar generator that'll tell you exactly how much all of this can pull down in optimum scenario. I'm not going to get an optimum scenario here today and ultimately that's the reality of using a solar generator is that 
sometimes you're going to have clouds, sometimes you're going to have dark days. You're not going to get maximum capacity all the time. It's late afternoon on a partly cloudy spring day, so I'm getting a wide range of input power from the panels. To my surprise, I was actually able to get the full capacity out of the four 100 watt panels when the clouds would part. In optimum conditions, a steady 400 watt input from the four panels will fully recharge the 1500 in about five hours. Okay, here's the scenario I was really curious about. I've got the fridge plugged in, and I've just turned the temperature way down on the fridge so it'll be running hard, trying to cool down. I've got my phone plugged into the USB, and I've got my drone batteries charging on the AC output. All of that is pulling 87 watts. 100 watts, 90 watts, 97 watts. It's fluctuating a little bit. Input right now is 220, 210, 170 as it goes behind the clouds there. Even with clouds blocking the sun, I'm getting more power coming into the Jackery than is going out to my fridge and battery chargers. You have to have realistic expectations of what your solar panels can bring you and the nice thing about this setup is that even when it's cloudy, it's bringing more power into this thing than my refrigerator uses. So it looks like I could sit here and run this stuff all day. I'll be honest here, setting up four panels and getting them all hooked up is a bit cumbersome. And obviously, you gotta have the space to be carrying all these panels. A clear advantage, however, over a panel mounted on your vehicle roof is that you can easily shift these around as the sun moves across the sky and use the kickstands to adjust for an optimum angle. Dad, I'm hungry. You're hungry? Yeah. Well, what do you feel like having? Waffles. We can't have waffles on top of a mountain. Or can we? So I wanted to think of something that would normally be impossible for me to cook while out camping. And uh, waffles is definitely one of them, at least with an electric waffle maker. This thing is well beyond the capacity of my Jackery 500. But uh, we're gonna run it off the 1500 and see how it goes. We cooked a round of four pair of waffles. Took about 10% off of the Jackery's power. We started at 33% and now it's down to 22%. It was cloudy most of the time, so we weren't getting a lot coming in from the solar panels, but 10% to cook up a batch of waffles, uh, not bad. It also occurred to me that uh, I could actually run a small microwave off of this. I don't have a small microwave to test out, but uh, I took a look at some in the store and they're definitely within the power capabilities of uh, the 1500. That really could be an interesting option to have, especially camping in inclement weather when uh, you don't want to be outside dealing with wind and rain and trying to run a propane stove. Being able to throw something in the microwave, I could see that being a, a nice option to have. You could even run a toaster or a toaster oven off of a 1500. It does open up a lot of cooking possibilities that I wouldn't normally have thought of. Now with the type of camping that I do, that may not be necessary. For people who are a little more 
van life, really living out of their vehicles. The ability to do some cooking that's not just on a propane stove would probably be really nice to have. This definitely is a much bigger, heavier unit than like my 500. This thing weighs in at about 33 pounds, I believe, and you can see it is quite a bit larger. The Explorer 1500 is 13 and a half inches wide, 13 inches tall, and just over 10 inches deep. I guess for three times the capacity, it's normal to expect it to be somewhat larger. This new illuminated display on the 1500 is nicer in a lot of ways than the display on my 500, which is just sort of a plain LCD. On the 500, when you press the display button, it uh, turns on a light so that you can see the display in the dark. One thing I don't like about this display is that even if the Jackery is powered up and running something, after a couple of minutes, the display shuts off. And so if you're in the middle of doing something and you wanna take a look and see what kind of power you're drawing out of the Jackery, uh, you actually have to hit the display button again to get it to show up. On the 500, as long as the Jackery is doing something, the LCD display always shows what's going on. Now the light shuts itself off, but the display itself is always active. So if I was out here today working on this, I would be able to glance at the display and see exactly what's happening. The display on the 1500 shuts itself off after 30 seconds. And even though it is still actively powering something, it does not show the status of what's happening unless you press the display button again. Now, that might be nitpicky, but I actually prefer how the display on the older 500 works. Obviously, all I can give you at this point is my first impressions. Beyond Lucy and I doing this initial test, uh, we really haven't had an opportunity to get out and truly use this in an overlanding scenario. This will be the sort of power hub of my new build with the truck, and so I will definitely be keeping you up to date on how this goes for me. In the meantime, here's a summary of my first impressions. First of all, I'm simply blown away by the capacity and the power output of this device. I'm really excited by the possibility of being able to use some more powerful types of tools on the trail, more powerful types of appliances, opening new possibilities for cooking while on the road. On top of that, the, the capacity means that I could theoretically go and set up someplace, stay for a week off grid without moving the truck and keep all my stuff powered up. That's never been a possibility before and uh, that's kind of intriguing. The dual inputs and the significantly faster charging time make this immensely more flexible to deal with. I don't necessarily have to drive all day long or sit immobile in the sun all day in order to keep enough juice in here to get me through the next night. This new display is nice, but I wish there was a way to toggle it on and off rather than having it shut off on its, on its own. It is definitely big and heavy but on the flip side, it's certainly far less cumbersome than a gas-powered generator. Four solar panels and all those cables is a lot to manage, but does provide a lot of setup flexibility in terms of following the sun. And I was impressed that when the sun was shining, those solar panels could feed in more power than the AC adapter can. I also like that this has real potential as a emergency power source in a power outage event. Unlike a dual battery system mounted into your car, this thing I can take from vehicle to vehicle, I can move it into my home, I could even set it up at a relative's home if a relative was in a power emergency. The flexibility of not having your power system bolted to your vehicle uh, really opens up a lot of potential. One final thought, I simply like the fact that I know I can trust this unit to do its job based on my experience over the past year with its little brother, the 500, and based on knowing a number of people who rely even more heavily on their Jackeries than I do. They've simply proven themselves to be reliable units. Now, if you're a weekend camper or a budget overlander, do you need a 1500 watt power station 
and an array of solar panels? No, absolutely not. But if you have the means to get into this system and you have the need for a serious, reliable, off-grid power system, then this is definitely an option to consider. If you're interested in any of Jackery's units, next week is Explorer Week. All Jackery products will be 15% off from May 17th through May 19th, 2021. And on the Explorer Week page, you can play Jackery's giveaway game. I think it takes a little work, but they are giving away a number of interesting prizes. So where is my next trip gonna be? The next for sure trip I know is actually gonna be sort of a special trip in that I will be meeting up with uh, a number of my cousins from all over the West Coast. We're gonna get together with our rigs and go out, do some uh, exploring and camping someplace out, probably in the Eastern Oregon wilderness, possibly in Washington. So that uh, trip I'm really looking forward to, reconnecting with a number of my cousins that I haven't seen for years and uh, just getting out and enjoying nature. What is the next trip that you have planned?